Hey everyone, this is Kieran. Uh, today's exercise is learning how to sort of gain some anchor points or some tension building ability around your ribs and your pelvis. Um, it's a nice bracing skill, something that you might use to lift. Not to say that you should always brace when you lift or always brace when you move, but it's nice to have that skill in the background. Um, and it's a nice way to set up the, I suppose, the foundation for those first mechanics around breathing. And this might be a go-to as a skill development that you, know, you see a lot of people needing after back pain episodes. So if that sounds like you, then this might be appropriate. So with any skill development, we need exposure to a lot of reps. And if we have, to be able to do a lot of reps, it has to be low uh, intensity. If it's high intensity, then we can't get that same amount of uh, reps, especially the quality of reps. And that's more of a stimulus for strength development. So the skill development, if this feels, for example, quite intense, then you need to do an easier version. And there are some easier versions, or you have to kind of microdose it and just do a little bit don't go to fatigue, don't go to failure, and um, you know revisit it at a later time in the day, or maybe do it again in another day. And over time, you'll build some, some ability or in capacity as well. So the two sort of movements that we're talking about are rib depression and elevation. And that can come from an inhalation and exhalation, but you can also get it from flexing or extending your thoracic spine. So if I flex, then my thoracic spine um, I'm sorry, my, if I flex my thoracic spine, then my ribs will go down. If I add an exhalation, they'll go down even further. If I extend my thoracic spine, then my ribs come up. And if I inhale, then those ribs will go up even further. And I need those things to happen, but I also need to be able to extend, lift up and exhale up here. And then down here, I also need to be able to inhale. So there's a, there's a quality of being able to breathe with all these movements too. The second movement is around the pelvis and it's the ability to tilt it forward and tilt it back. So this is tipping forward and tilting back. And when you look at the tension or the, the relationship between sort of that pelvic ring and then also the rib cage ring on top, you've got these two rings here and they're constantly sort of moving around each other. And if I kind of had this example, so you're looking more of like a bird's eye view, and I bring, say, the ribs over here, you can see that it's moved outside the uh, pelvic ring. And it's not that that's a bad thing, but if it's not under control or not under tension of those muscles, then, and it's repetitive, then you might start to develop some other compensations elsewhere. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes those compensations can't last as long, and so you might find that you're getting aches and pains. For example, if I go this way long enough, I'm gonna use some muscles to try and pull myself back to the right, maybe my neck, maybe like a lower back muscle, but until I get the rib cage back over, I'm not gonna relieve the tension on those muscles. So basically we have to kind of reteach this ability to create tension. And the first direction you're gonna do it in is a sagittal forward and back plane. And this can be quite tricky for a lot of people right after an injury or people that have had injuries and maybe just have ongoing symptoms. So the trick is, is I need to be able to create that kind of S shape in the spine. I'm not saying you have to stay there, but you want to have the skill of being able to be there and then move your limbs while maintaining that. So what that looks like is I can get my hand under my lower back. Okay. And there's that space there, but then I can't get my hands under this part underneath my ribs, my thoracic spine. That's pushed down into the ground. What you'll find for a lot of people or yourself is that it's you coupled it together. So if I were to say, bring my ribs down, they'll also close down this space in the lower back. I'm doing a posterior tilt and I'm depressing my ribs. If I do the opposite, so if I anterior tilt my pelvis and I go this way and create that gap again, they'll also lift the ribs up. So that's good, we need those skills but you also need the, the, them going opposite directions. So my ribs go down and then my pelvis goes into a little bit anterior tilt. 
Neither of them are going to be able to go as far because they're opposing each other. But I'll be able to have some space here and no space under here. For some people, that can be kind of hard at first. So if you feel like your neck's really tensing up, give yourself a pillow, some passive support. You might need to take tension off the front of the neck. And that might just be because you're using, you've been using your neck muscles to try and assist through a synergistic chain. Other people just can't really figure out where to push from. And that's that idea of having enough awareness to be able to create an anchor. You need an anchor to be able to move from. And the anchor in this case provides movement for breathing mechanics. So get like a towel or roll something up and put it underneath. And so now I can feel something under here and I'm just going to squish it. You could use the other hand so I could try and pull it out and I can't because I'm squishing it. Whereas under the lower back down here, I can pull it out because there's no tension there. Once you've got that down though, so you squish down, keep that space. This is where you might start to look at the dead bug exercise. We've got a video for that. You can check it out. There'll be a progression. And it just means my legs now are challenging my ability to hold this. All right, keeping that pressure down here, but maintaining that space here. Or we could look like a dumbbell pullover. We've got videos for that too. The weight's in the hands and it's going this way. I'm challenging this ability. All right, so it's, it's, a, it's a skill to get it. But it would have been something that you've been able to do in the past. But sometimes after injuries, we just create protective tension. And that protective tension might just mean that we lose ranges of motion because we don't use it as much. If you don't use something as much, you lose that skill, right? Just like anything in life. So again, we're not saying you need to live all day in this neutral position, but it's good to have the skill to be able to go there as a reference point. And sometimes you'll find that that reference point enables more range in your hips and your shoulders because you've got more tension keeping the pelvis and the ring of the thoracic cage on top of each other. As soon as they move outside of each other, not under control, then you're in a situation where you need to create tension somewhere else and you're going to go next door. And sometimes that's the shoulder joints or the hip joints because they're next door. So if you can get the tension into there and learn to ramp it up like a, like a dimmer on a light, you can ramp it up brighter if you need to, or you can dial it down. Not an on off, just an ability to ramp up tension as needed for appropriate for the task or to bring it down. Okay. So something to think about. And if you look at most of our videos, we do talk about this as a setup. So for example, lunge, squat, pressing, pulling. I'm going to set up this way first. And then I'll also do exercises where I go outside of it and deviate out of it too. That means I'm training all the skills. Okay. So not really a perfect sort of reps and sets here. It's just exposure, lots of reps. Maybe just put a timer on your phone, five minutes, 10 minutes, freestyle. You start to get some discomfort somewhere, stop, go back in the next day or a day after. In time, you get better and better and it'll get easier and easier. If you're hitting some roadblocks, you just might need to relieve some tension in your hips, shoulders, or neck. Those would be sort of the, the nearest go-tos. Um, otherwise, look at some of your older injuries and see if there's some loss of flexibility around those areas. Stretch it and then try this and see if it's a bit easier to do. So let us know how you go. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.